Hello there. If you don't want this to happen, but you do want this, here's what you do. First of all, you're going to need an image. There are several places you can get images from. The easiest place to start is in Design Space. From your canvas, go to Images and then browse all images. Then use the Operation Type filter on the left hand side and choose Print then Cut. You'll find a selection of images, some which need to be paid for, some which need a subscription to Cricut Access and a few free ones. If you find an image you want to use, select it and add it to your canvas. And all you'll need to do is resize it to the size that you want it to be. But you can also find free images in the PNG format that you need by searching for them in Google. When you find an image that you like, you can select it and go to the website and download it from there. To use that image, you'll need to go to your canvas and then on the left panel, go down to upload and then click on the upload image button. Next, you'll need to hit the browse button to find the image on your computer, then hit open. Next, you'll need to select the image type. You have three types, simple, moderately complex and complex. Read the description and choose the one you think best fits your image. I expected this one to be moderately complex, but actually I needed to select complex. Then hit continue. If needed, you can clean up your image on this page, such as removing a background or tidying up any edges. This image looks fine, so I don't need to do that. Select the print then cut option and then upload. Now I need to select my image from the uploaded images and add to canvas. And then you'll just need to resize it to the size that you want. And of course you can make your own images in Design Space. A simple and effective recipe for a sticker design is to select a background shape, change the operation to print then cut, give it a background color or background pattern, add some text, change the operation to print then cut, you might want to use more than one font and you may want to add a image. I find I get the best print then cut results if I add an offset outline to my background shape. And I found that I get a better cut if the outline is colored rather than white. The last step is to select all and flatten. If you don't flatten, then all your pieces will be placed on your mat separately instead of all together like this. If this is the first time that you've used the print then cut operation, you're going to need to calibrate your machine next. To do this, go to the menu on your home screen and select calibration from the list. Then select the print then cut option. Follow the instructions in step one. You can use a normal piece of A4 printer paper. Once you've got your printout, follow the instructions in step two. Ensure your printout is placed securely on your mat. Now you're going to need to load your mat into your machine. Then press start. Your machine is then going to read the registration marks on your printout. When it's finished reading the registration marks, your machine will cut out the small square. This is the first test cut of the calibration process. When it's finished, you will need to check that your machine has cut within the black printed line of the square. Design Space will ask if the cut line has touched the printed line all the way around. It doesn't need to be central. So long as the cut is within the black lined area, you can select yes. Your machine will then continue on to the next part of the calibration process. Your machine will now make cuts across the top and down the right side of your printout. And then Design Space will ask you which line across the top and which one down the side have the cuts that are closest to the center of the line. When you found them, then select them on Design Space. Your machine will then cut out the inner rectangle on your printout. You can remove the rectangle and see your cut. And if it has cut within the black lined area, then you can click yes on Design Space to the final question. Then you'll need to save and close. Now that your machine has been calibrated, you can prepare your stickers to be printed. I've designed five stickers and put them into a row and attached them together. And I'm going to add six more rows on the Make It page. It's now possible to get more stickers on the page than previously. Design Space will create a thick black registration border around your stickers. The registration border is movable up to a certain point. You can test it by moving your stickers around to see how far it can go. 
Here I've pushed the registration boundary as far as it can go. To add more rows, all you need to do is go up to the top left corner where it says project copies and in, use the arrow to increase the number or decrease it if you need to and then click apply. I can fit in a total of seven rows of this size sticker. Next, make sure the material size is set to the same size as your sticker paper. When you're ready, click continue. Now place your sticker paper in your printer and hit send to printer. To get the very best results, on the next page, choose the Use System Dialog button and leave the Add Bleed button on. Then hit Print. Your dialog box will probably appear behind your Design Space page. When your dialog box appears, you will want to do a couple of things to get the best results. Firstly, you'll want to make sure your paper type is on the best setting. Cricut sticker paper is a very thick material, so I chose a specialty paper in matte. And you'll also want to change your quality to best. This will give your stickers a much richer colour than the normal default setting. And then hit print to send your stickers to the printer. Once they're printed, you're going to need to choose your base material. I'm using Cricut printable sticker paper. Now you need to put your printed sticker sheet on the top left corner of your mat and then hit the load button on your machine. Your machine will go ahead and cut around the stickers. As you can see, these stickers have a white offset background and it isn't quite even. When I changed the offset outline to a colour, they came out better. If you remember, we left the bleed on and this is a small border around each image that allows for a more precise cutting. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Bye bye for now.